Hey guys, welcome to your chapter five, lesson five notes on standard form. Let's get started right away with a definition called the x-intercept. You've heard of y-intercept, now get excited for the x-intercept. It's basically a y-intercept, but it's wherever you cross the um, x-axis, so that's exciting. Um, you need to know what an x-intercept is to help you with something called standard form. Standard form is called standard form because it uses integers. Um, and it's nice to look at, but, you know, whatever. Um, standard form looks like where you have some integer x. Or not, not x, times x, plus some integer times y equals some other integer. Yay! Cool. So this is really what it looks like. Um, it looks like this guy right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, hey, what is the x-intercept? And what is the y-intercept? So remember that a y-intercept when we use like y equals mx plus b, for example, that's always on the y-axis. If, if I have a graph, right? The y-axis is this guy right here. Um, so our intercept is always going to be on the y-axis. Now the y-axis is whenever x equals zero. Y-axis means we only have a y, we don't have any x, so that is no x, uh, and then it'll be some number b, okay? But then the x-intercept is going to be the exact opposite of that. It'll be some number, but there's no y. So it'll be at zero. Okay, so how do we find out what the x-intercept is and what the y-intercept is? To find the x-intercept, you say, hey, y's is zero. So x-intercept means set y equal to zero. And that'll tell you where it intersects the x-axis. I'm going to rewrite the equation because I keep forgetting what it is. So you get 4x plus 3, 3x plus 4y. That's probably why I forget because I keep saying it wrong. 3x plus 4y equals 24. So to find the x-intercept, set y equal to 0. Okay, so I'm going to replace my y with a 0. Boop. Okay. Um, 4 times 0 is 0. So that tells me 3x plus 0 equals 24. And guys, I don't even need to bother to write plus 0. I'm just going to say 3x equals 24. Our goal here is we want to figure out what is x, because it's always an x-coordinate. So we're going to divide by 3 real quick. We get x equals 8. So our uh, x-intercept is at 8. Sweet. Pro tip. Um... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you the shortcut right now. But I'm going to show you the shortcut with the y-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we want to find where x equals 0. So let's just say, hey, let's take it out of the equation. Like, literally, that's what we're doing. We're setting x equal to 0, so it disappears, just like y disappeared over here. That's the shortcut. You get rid of it. You say, hey, if u equals 0, then you're gone. And we solve for y. So we divide by 4, y equals 6. Okay. So finding intercepts is very straightforward. You just set the other guy equal to 0. Now let's show this on the graph. Um, this comes in handy because we just want to find what the intercepts are. So to find the x-intercept, remember, to find the x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0. So let's take this equation x minus 2y equals negative 2. I'm going to um, write it twice because we're going to do this process twice. To find the x-intercept, set y equal to 0. So I'm going to say, hey, if y is 0, then x minus 2 times 0 is negative 2. But 0, you don't need that. You can just pretend like that didn't happen because that's all just one big 0. It zeroes away. So x minus 0 equals negative 2, which means x equals negative 2. So our x-intercept is at negative 2. 
since x equals negative 2, let's go to that x-axis and plot a negative 2 on there. Boom! Right there. Notice how we go over 2, up nothing. We go up nothing because we're right on the axis, and that's why y equals 0. Let's do the exact opposite of that to find not the x-intercept, but to find the y-intercept, let's not set x equal to zero, or let's not set y equal to zero, let's set x equal to zero. So, here we go. Um, x, we say, is zero. Haha, -ha, x equals zero. But again, I don't even need that zero there. I can just write it without the zero. And that's fine. If that's your shortcut, go for it. Okay, sweet. Um, so now we are trying to get y all by himself. So we divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. y equals, oh hey, that's nice, just 1. So our y-intercept is 1. Remember, to find our y-intercept, we go on the y-axis right here. Since it's 1, we go up 1. And now we have two dots. Since we have two dots, we can take a line that goes through them all. Sorry, I totally missed. Amazing. There, that's how you graph an equation in standard form. Find the intercepts and connect them. Okay, got it? Do your best to graph this guy right here. Okay, here we go. Here's my shortcut. I want to start out by finding where this graph intersects the x-axis. So I look at this guy and I notice, hey, on the x-axis, we're going, we don't, we don't go up or down at all. So that means y is zero. So I'm just going to pretend like he doesn't exist. So looking at this, 2x equals 20 means x equals 10. So my x-intercept is at 10. Okay, same thing. I'm going to cross out or rather, to find my y-intercept. Boom. Y-intercept means we don't go anywhere on the x at all. It's always straight here. So that means x is 0. Pretend that that doesn't exist for a while. Um, if 5y equals 20, then y equals 4. So I'm going to take my y, mark a 4 right there. I should just label it just to be extra clear. Okay. Now I've got two points on my graph. I'm going to take my two points and I'm going to connect them. By the way, if you want to make a straight line in Notability, and you start at one point, hold it down, draw it, and it'll be great, and then stop and hold. And then you can move it around. Wow! Okay. Ta-da! Amazing graph. That's it. That's literally how you graph in standard form. Cool! Or you can do the lazy man's graph, which is these guys right here. Let's make the graph of x equals 3. Okay, so that says no matter what, y is x equals 3. So we'll unmark it at over 3, 0. I'll go up 1, over 3, up 1, over 3, up 2, over 3, up 5, over 3, up 10, over 3, down negative 5, over 3, down negative 10. Hmm, I wonder what these all have in common. Well, that was, I've gotten out of habit of having to draw a really good straight line. There we go. It's literally a vertical line, and there you go, guys. That's the graph. Because when x equals 3, you will have no other x value. No matter how high, how up, down you go, x is always 3. That's it. That's that graph. Can you predict how to graph y equals 3? y equals 3? Remember when y equals 3? It doesn't matter what x is. Yes, at 0, you can go up 3. That's a point. At, you go over 5, up 3. Over 10, up 3. Left 1, up 3. Left 3, up 3. y is 3. No matter how far you go, y will always be there for you and it will always be three how sweet is that remember that these are two kinds of lines that have very um 
special slope. Vertical lines always have undefined slope. That's one word, by the way. Undefined. And horizontal lines always have a slope of zero. That's fun. I should have made them in our slope color, but I forgot. Okay, cool. So that was a nice break. Let's go back to standard form. Remember that standard form looks like this. AX plus BY equals C. And standard form is really nice because like up here, you literally just cross things out and that gives you two points and then you can graph it and it makes graphing really fast. But what if you have something gross like this? How can you make it look like that? Well, the key to notice here is that X and Y are on the same side. Oh, they're on the same team. How cute is that? Okay, so we want to get them to be on the same side, the equal sign on the same team. So there goes my phone. Um, I want to get this whole X expression to the other side. So I'm going to undo that by adding three sevenths of X to both sides. Because remember what you do on one side, the equal sign, you got to do on the other side. Okay. I should have gave you guys a little space. I'll put this up here, I guess. All right. So on the left side of the equal sign, that gives me, and I'm going to put the X expression first. So it looks like X plus Y. Um, so I have three sevenths X plus Y equals, these guys cancel out, see you later, equals five. Okay, but we're not quite in integers yet. Remember, integers is like whole numbers that are allowed to be negative as well. So the easiest way, honestly, you guys, the easiest way is to look at this and say, oof, this is not an integer because we have something over seven. So how am I going to get rid of that? Well, I'm just going to multiply literally, excuse me, literally everything by seven. I'll multiply this side by seven. I'll multiply this side by seven. I'm going to go ahead and take my seven and distribute it. To both items here, giving me um, 7 times 3 sevenths x plus 7 times y. See how I put a 7 on both of these guys? Okay, awesome, cool. Equals 5 times 7 uh, is 35. We're almost there. The whole reason we did this is because these 7s are going to cancel out. Bye-bye, see you later. So it gives us 3x plus 7y equals 35. Sweetums, right? Okay. Um, example B is the same kind of deal, but we need to distribute first. We need to take this um, negative 1 thirds right here, and we need to distribute him to our x and to our 6. So let's go ahead and do that. That gives us negative 2 equals negative 1 third times x plus negative 1 third times 6. See how we took that negative 1 third times x, negative 1 third times 6. Let's simplify that just a little bit. That's negative 1 third x. Um, negative 1 third times 6 is 2. That negative tells us that's a negative 2. So I'm going to go minus 2. Cool. Now, let's get our x expression to the other side. This whole guy, this x term, needs to go to the other side. So the opposite of that is plus one third x. We do that to both sides of our equation, giving us one third x plus y minus two equals negative two. We're almost there. We need to get all of our numbers to the same side of the equation. So I want to get rid of that minus 2. The opposite of that is adding a 2. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. That's really cool because these cancel out. Oh, no. These also cancel out, giving us 0. Weird. And then these guys stay the same. Oh, OK. But that's fine. Zero's an integer. So let's get rid of this three on the bottom. Gross. We're going to multiply both sides by three. Right side doesn't matter because zero times three is in fact zero. I'm going to do this in one step. A third of three 
is 1. So we get x plus 3 times y is 3y. Done. Okay, we've got one more. Um, and this is why standard form is super helpful for word problems like this guy. Right? So let's say you're downloading songs and, and movies and stuff. Okay, and the songs are one, oops, sorry. The songs are $1 each and the movies are $12 each. You can have, you have 60 total dollars to spend. Uh, I guess we'll do that. Write and graph an equation that describes the items you can purchase. What are three different combinations of songs and movies that you can purchase? Okay, well, let's let um, X be our number of songs. And let's let uh, Y be our number of movies. And the easiest way to come up with the equation is to think zero. Why think zero? Because that's like looking at our intercepts, right? If we don't buy any movies, if the movies we buy is zero, how many songs can we get? Well, we have $60 to spend and each movie costs $1. Oh, I'm sorry, I totally, no, I, I did this right, okay. Well, that means 60 equals X. We can buy 60 movies. Nope. Songs. I got lost. I'm sorry. We can, buy, we can buy 60 songs. Okay. So we can buy 60 songs and zero movies. Hey, guys, we've got a, we've got an answer already. You know, we just need two more. Okay. Well, let's keep thinking zero. What happens when X is zero? How many movies can we get if we don't buy any songs? Well, we still have $60 to spend. Okay, how much do movies cost? Movies cost 12. Okay, $12, okay. Plus oh, 12 times Y, okay. Yay, that's exciting. So that means we can buy, um, well, we need to divide by 12 real quick. Figure out what that is, five. So if we buy zero songs, are we buying or renting? We're buying. Um, you can buy five songs. Nope, just kidding, not 12. I don't know what I did wrong. No, I did it. I did it right. We can buy five. Five movies. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes and I'm looking at the wrong part of them. <laughs> okay. So if we have zero songs... We can buy five movies. And if we have zero movies, we can buy 60 songs. All right. That's just like one super long album. I'm just kidding. It's probably like five albums. Great. Well, we've kind of written an equation already. But here we go. So we know that for every... Dollar, you know what, I'm, guys, I'm just going to take what we have and I'm going to put them together. You have the price of the songs plus the price of the movies. You add them together and put your total. How much can you spend? And there you go. That's your equation. But I don't like the one in front, so I'm just going to go, hey, X. Haha. <laughs> Hey, look at it, we did it! And now we can graph it. So let's do that. But guys, guess what? We already found our intercepts. We found what happened when y equals zero and when x equals zero. Yay. Over. Over. Okay. So, um, we see that our y goes all the way up to five. We can buy up to five movies. Don't even have to spell movies correctly. One, two, three, four, five movies purchased. If we don't buy any movies, we already know we can buy 60 songs. Oh, yikes. I am not going to count all the way to 60. So what if we went 5, 10, 
15, 20, 25, 30. That's real nice. That'll get us there. Almost. <laughs> 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. There we go. 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Cool. To get to that point. And that's our graph. We started a y intercept. We connect it to our x intercept. I said we connect it to our x intercept. Sweet. Now let's find where, uh, where our graph crosses a solid number. We have that at 5. No, we don't. What about at 10? Nope. What about 15? Nope. What about 20? Man, that's not pretty either. Come on, graph. 25? 30? Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's look at 30. So when x equals 30, y equals... Two and a half. Well, that's certainly not going to work, is it? Mm hmm. Let's keep going. 35? 40? 45? 50? Well, my strategy certainly didn't work. Okay, we're just going to have to plug and check. What are some three combinations of numbers and movies that you can purchase? Well... Here we go, guys. Let's see. What if we buy... Let's, let's plug some values in here for Y. What if we buy one... Uh, what is Y again? Movies. Let's say we buy one movie. How much money will that give us for songs? Well, we plug in 1 for our y, number of movies, so that gives us x plus 12 equals 60. We're going to subtract 12 from both sides. x equals 48. Super duper. If we buy one movie, we can also purchase 48 songs. Guys, we need to find this store. This is an incredible sale. Hey. So there you go. There's our list. We can either buy 60 songs and no movies. We can buy zero songs and five movies. We can buy 48 songs and one movie. You can also look out how many songs you can get if you get two movies, three movies, four, mo or four movies. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. This should match up theoretically if we went to one movie. That would give us 48 songs. All right, cool. Well, have a fantastic time on your homework. Remember the intercept rule. Graph the intercepts first. Set each variable equal to zero. And you must, must, must always, always remember to find joy in your homework. Have a great time.